last time on Blueprint DIY. It's quarter day, everyone. And that means everything in my thrift outlet is one quarter. Amazing, right? The thing about it is that with quarter day, the stuff can be kind of, let's just say lived in. <laughs> but what if we could cover it with something else? Oh, Fringe and Fur are big on sweaters right now. Maybe another sweater dress? I just hope these stains are food or something, not nothing gross. <laughs> So 2019 is coming fast. I mean like lightning fast and we need to be ready. I mean like wardrobe on point ready. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to take those clothes that I got in the damaged clothes challenge and I'm gonna show you how to add them to things or add other things to them in order to make them spot on for 2019. I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. All right, first up is this cream sweater. Yes, this is the same sweater from the clip you just saw. I just knew that these dark stains were never coming out, but I threw it in a wash with that silk blouse that I showed you guys last week with a little bit of Ajax dish soap, and it's as good as new, go figure. So not so damaged anymore, but we're still gonna do a little something to it. First, we're gonna fix that fit issue with a little exposed seam down the back. I'll just fold it in half and make two seams right down the back. I make two seams because I don't want the sweater to begin to unravel. Then I just cut it about a half an inch from the seam. So now the first detail you can add to make your clothes stand out and give them some interest is to add vintage buttons. And there's no rule as to where you should add them. I know somebody who replaced the buttons on a long red teddy coat and added different unique vintage buttons down the front. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I have these buttons from last week's haul plus some from my stash and I'm gonna add them on the sleeves. I think little simple things like this make your clothes look designer or like you bought them in a boutique. And as always, I'll definitely style everything at the end. And trust me, these simple little edits make such a big difference. All right, next up is this perfect condition Ann Taylor turtleneck that I got for a quarter last week. It's not damaged, but the sleeves are too short and I just had to add fringe to something. So that's number two, try adding fringe, fur, or even feathers to your clothes to make them really unique. It's been big on the runways for a while and it's still going strong. If you don't want something as dramatic, try it in simple ways like adding a little to your sleeves. I thrifted this skirt at the outlet for maybe $2 a while back. First, I'm gonna measure the slightly stretch width of my sleeves. Then cut out a portion of the fringe fabric that is that long plus seam allowance. Next, I'll fold it over and sew it. Now I cut the sleeve wherever I want the fringe to be and pin the fringe piece over the sleeve cuff. Then I'll sew those two pieces together. Next I can pin it to the arm portion and sew that together. I really want to attach that top part of the fringe piece with a top stitch to the sleeve. So in real life I should have connected that part first and then sewn it to the cuff. I really wish I had shown you guys how the sleeve looked at the end but my bobbin ran out right before ending the stitch and I was hot. So yeah, I'll show you guys in the styling portion at the end. Okay, so next up is this faded tank top with the sequence and beading. I cannot tell you guys how many bad and just plain abuse sequence tops I see at the thrift stores. But if you're into hand stitching, this tip is for you. Let's add some sparkle to a beanie for those colder months. And you can really add it to anything. I'm just gonna take the sequence off with a seam ripper. They actually came off pretty easy. Then I'm gonna use a needle and thread and add one bead at a time in random fashion. But next time I decide to do anything involving hand stitching, y'all please remind me that I hate hand stitching. I just do it because I really love you guys and I know that not everyone has a sewing machine. Okay, last up is the piece de resistance. It's this vintage red wool coat that I scored for $2 at the outlet. Yes, $2. But I know you guys are asking what's wrong with it. Well, it does have some moth spots mostly on the back panel. So we're gonna do something that I've been wanting to do all season long. We're gonna take that back panel off and add a print. So that's number four, add plaid, flannel, or a retro geometric print to your outerwear. I promise you it will make your wardrobe next level for real. So first I'm gonna use my seam ripper to start taking out the back panel of the coat. Wool is strong enough that once you get it started, you can just rip out the rest of the seam. Next, I have these wool chevron print pants that I also found at the outlet. I'm gonna take the pants apart so that I can use the back of the pants. Then I'll lay it on top of the back panel of the coat that is now going to be the pattern for my new back panel. 
Just a quick warning for those with upper respiratory issues. There is a lot of dust involved with taking apart wool, especially vintage wool, so guard yourself accordingly. Next, I'll pin it so that I can sew a straight seam down the middle to make it a flat panel, basically taking out the butt curves. Also, it's not quite long enough, so I'm gonna open up the waistband and take out the darts as well. Okay, so here's that middle seam after cutting off the excess. It doesn't go all the way down just to leave a split or vent in the back. After ironing everything flat, I'm gonna pin it down to the original back piece and cut it out. Once it's unpinned from the original piece, I can begin sewing it to the coat beginning with the neck portion. While taking off the original back, I noticed that the neck seam was hand stitched to the inside neck seam. So I'm gonna replicate that again because it'll help the coat lay properly. Next, I'll attach the shoulder seams. making sure to close up any seams that get left open along the way. Now I'll sew up the side seams, beginning with the hem because I want that to line up exactly. Once my side seams are done, I'll attach the sleeve portion last. Now, of course, the sleeves are too short. The story of my life, right? But even if yours aren't too short, you can cut off a portion and add a different color or pattern of fabric to the ends. So I'll measure the sleeve and then measure out a leftover piece of the pants to match. I'll sew down the side and pin it to the sleeve and then sew them together. But let's back up a minute. This brings me to my last and favorite detail for 2019 unique strapping you guys know that i love to add straps to my clothes in unexpected ways and i'm not the only one because it's really everywhere right now so this coat is no exception the wool pants are a lighter weight than the coat so i needed to take the sleeve back off to add some interfacing to it but i didn't have any of the correct thickness so i cut some denim and sandwiched it with some heat and bond between so now i'm going to add some strapping with buckles to the extended sleeve portion and I'm also going to use the front waistband of the pants to cinch the back portion of the coat. Next, I'll cut a triangular or more like a trapezoid shape to sew inside the split to make it an inverted box pleat. Lastly, I'll use the lining on the wool pants to extend the sleeve lining and hand stitch it to the inside of the new sleeve hem. Okay, so now for the really exciting part. Our old dirty quarter sweater is now that it sweater. You can easily dress it up or dress it down. Here I styled it with these light wash $2 thrifted jeans that I absolutely love and some new patent pumps. It would have been okay without the buttons on the sleeves, but I just think it's so much more interesting now. And I'm really feeling the exposed seam in the back. Okay, so next up, let's look at our fringe sleeve turtleneck. I actually wore this top on Sunday with just some jeans, but here I'm gonna dress it up a bit with my favorite camel colored gauchos from Zaffle and some black suede booties that I thrifted last year. I think the fringe fits so seamlessly with this top and does a killer job of adding standout style. It's one of those tops that make layering so much fun. I'm gonna throw in this totally awesome newsboy cap that I scored at five below this past week. And I was super excited because I saw the same one at Zara for $30. Then I'll add this J. Crew P coat that I recently thrifted for $30, but I totally don't regret it because it's awesome. <laughs> and then this green infinity scarf that I also thrifted for a few bucks. And lastly, my black embellished crossbody bag from Zaffle. It's funny how having one top that you really, really love can make a whole outfit come together. And since I love it so much, let's change it up a bit by throwing on some Adidas leggings and our embellished hat. And the red coat, of course. My sinuses made this a very hard project to do this week with all the dust it made. But I am so glad that I finally was able to complete this project. It's going to be one of my favorites to date. What do you guys think? Which one is your favorite and what details are you excited to add to your clothes in the new year? Let me know in the comments. I have some really fun stuff and a ton of requested videos coming up. So go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out. And hit that join button for sneak peeks and behind the scenes footage. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye.